There is so much to cover in today's video, so take a seat. There's a lot that we're gonna be going over today, a lot to finally explain to you guys. A, lo a lot of questions that you probably have that I haven't answered in a long time. Today's the day. By the title of this video, we're gonna be talking about my home garage, my home building, so much stuff that I've talked to you guys about if you've watched the channel for a long time. But first, I have to show you guys something because Sabrina got me a new R34 GTR and I haven't shown you guys. She got it for me for Christmas and it's not a real car, no, but it is an RC car and it looks like this. And for those that know anything about drift RC cars, I have so much newfound respect for these things. I built this whole thing. I had to build the upper A-arms, the lower A-arms. There's actual oil in these shocks. We had to build the servos, the drive shaft, the diff, the axles. It's a whole entire thing. It was a Christmas gift. This thing was pricey. This thing's expensive. Apparently, Sabrina reached out on Instagram and said if anyone has recommendations for Drift RC cars, TJ wants one. A lot of you reached out. It is so fun. I built the whole entire thing over Christmas break and it took me like almost two full days. I probably spent 12 hours building that whole thing. It was a ton of fun. If you like RC cars, leave some comments down below. Maybe I'll show you guys the rest of this stuff. But look, here is my R34 body. This is gonna be the body cover for the RC car. And it looks a little funky right now and you're wondering why is there tape on it? I'm about to paint it. I haven't painted it yet because I made a big mistake. So I wanted to be very, very extra with this car and I saw that a lot of people mod these to be as realistic as possible. They put headlights and taillights and I'll have all these light up things, which I do have, but I wanted to have it match my R34 to the exact T. So I purchased Midnight Purple 2 model car paint. This paint was not cheap. Uh, and then I got it and then I realized I needed a little spray gun for it. And then I end up going to like an RC shop to try to find the air gun spray gun thing. And I showed him this and he said, that's for like a model car. And if you try to paint that on the flexible shell of the R34, it's gonna crack and it won't work. I was really sad. I've like yet to use it on anything, but if I can capture any of this, you guys know that I'm pretty familiar with what Midnight Purple 2 paint is supposed to look like. And this is pretty darn accurate. I almost want to spray it or buy a spray brush just so I can use it. Or I was thinking if I ever need it, I could use this as like touch up paint on this car. I'm kind of half joking when I say that, but at the same time, like kind of not. So I still need to paint it. And when I was at the RC Hobby Shop place, I found this color. This is supposed to represent what Bayside Blue would look like. I have a Bayside Blue R34 GTR in Japan, if you don't know that. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just switch it up and I'll paint this on this and we won't do Midnight Purple and we'll have something similar. It's not really accurate, like, but it's close enough and it gets the job done. Weird little side note. Makes a ton of sense now once you think about it, but I thought you'd place all these stickers and then cover them up with tape and then spray the outside of it. But I realized you actually spray the underside so that when it gets hit and you flip it and you crash it, it never actually scuffs the body. I don't know why that's like the most genius thing I've ever thought of and I've never thought of that, but I almost painted the outside of this thing and I almost screwed all of it up. I don't know much about this stuff, but if you guys like it, leave comments down below and I'll show the rest of this process. I'm thinking about buying another one to build because low key building it was more fun than actually driving it. Although it is really fun to drive. And lastly, before we talk about the main part of this video, if any of you guys have an old JDM car, or an old exotic, like, or an old Ferrari, or old Lambo, or old anything that is just wasting, or abandoned, or left to rot, or a project car that you've given up on, and you wanna sell it, so we can rebuild it on this channel, get a hold of me via Instagram, find my email, email me, get a hold of me, tell me you want to sell it. Let's talk, because I'd like to try to revive as many old abandoned cars as possible this year, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So if you have any old cars like this, in any condition that are terrible, hit me up, because I'm trying to save them. This right here is something that I promised you guys that I failed. About three 
years ago, right after I purchased this house, I told you guys that I was gonna be building a state-of-the-art home garage that would be the new home for all the videos and my whole entire car collection. And I set out to do that. And I got very, very far down the process. I actually, to be very clear, I got about 15 months and about 30 to $40,000 down that road. One of the main reasons as to why I bought this whole entire house was so that I could do this. A house that was in California, still had the benefits of friends and family and had all the land possible to build the most wild dream garage I could think of. I had an architect, I had an engineer, we had construction workers, we had a builder, and we had multiple bids. Now I don't really know what I'm looking at, but these right here are scaled plans for where the garage was supposed to be, where the parking is supposed to be, where the driveway was, the grade, and all of these random numbers and all these things that my home garage was supposed to be. I teased these plans to you guys multiple times in the past and <sighs> there is a sad ending to this story, but the story is not over yet. We're gonna hop on the one wheel and we're gonna take a little trip and I'm gonna show you guys where everything was supposed to go down and I'm gonna try to show you what's left of all the work that we actually started. know how far I can walk through all of this stuff because there's so many weeds and stuff that have grown over all of the grading work that we did. Right here you guys, you're looking at it. This was supposed to be our shop. Before we get into the details of what happened, I first off want to show you what this place was supposed to look like. I reached out to a company called Hugo Renders and they made a beautiful scale model, one to one ratio of what this place was supposed to look like. And I was going to show it to you guys as a teaser when the construction started so I could be like, guys, look what we're building. I can't wait to do all these videos and update it. And they did an amazing job in the link down below. So if you have a project, you have anything that you want to have rendered into a video so you can get an accurate representation of what it looks like, click the links down below. Hugo Renders they did an amazing job. I have about a minute video to share with you here. Now, you saw some of it on the thumbnail. Now, guys, sit back, enjoy, and dream with me for one minute here, and enjoy this video of what this garage was supposed to be. amazing was that I can't believe that that was supposed to be in this exact space we were supposed to have a driveway that comes down loops over here everything from this point on was graded over we have about two football fields of land going that way and at one point in time we had guys up here grading all of this land and we had so much work going on we still have stakes and cones and it's essentially an abandoned work site that's what this is right now as you could tell by the photos was beautiful Beautiful two-story shop had a balcony overlooking this view. It was really close to the house It was everything that I could ever ask for 
but sometimes you take W's and sometimes you take L's. Now, this wasn't an L per se, and I'll explain that in just a little bit, but I am making this video so that I could be completely honest and transparent with you guys because that's what I think, that's what it's all about. I didn't want to never bring this up uh, and have everyone kind of questioning and, and wondering what happened and what was CJ talking about and why didn't he ever build this shop? And I still see comments like, where's the shop update? Well, here it is. So in about a week's time, you're gonna see a video of a brand new shop. I wanted to keep it a secret, but then I kind of decided that as we got closer to it, I should address this first, just to clear the air, get rid of all of the confusion. But there is a facility, there is a, a mate, I don't even want to say, I don't want to even say anything that's going to spoil it. But I'll say this, there's a new opportunity that came up that I jumped on, that I've been working on for the past few months to solidify. And this new, let's call it space, is amazing. And it is better than what you just saw. Because of the opportunities we'll be able to do there. We'll be able to host events with you guys. We'll be able to do open house garages, cars and coffees, pop-up shops. The actual list is infinite, but there's an opportunity for us to expand way more than anything that I ever could do here because this is at my house. I don't want to be hosting car meets or car events or cars and coffee or hunt and co open houses here at my house. And then this new facility that we're going into, which you're going to see a video on very, very soon. And I'm trying to just keep it low key until it's ready and I can show you guys we're gonna have everything all in one for the first time in 10 years, which to me is super exciting. This facility, this dream might still happen one day. When we bought this house, I hired an architect and I hired an engineer to work together to build everything that you guys just saw. And when we first started, it was right in the beginning of COVID or right in the middle of COVID. We got a budget for how much we wanted to spend. We had a timeline for how much we wanted to spend. And we said, cool. We can make that happen. I think that that is worth it and we're gonna build and we're gonna make it happen. And for those that have built your own home or for those who have built construction or in construction, you understand the cost that it takes to hire an engineer and hire an architect to build things. It's not cheap, let me be the one to tell you. For the next few months, we had the city people out here making sure that the heights were good and the grade of the back of the hill was good and we had to build all these supporting ledges and walls so that the mountain wouldn't crumble on itself. We went through this whole entire process and then we finally got the green light like, all right, you guys are ready. Let's start taking some new bids and let's get going. And that's where I ran into a problem. At this point in time, COVID was pretty much over and everything in the market had either done doubled or tripled. When we're talking about metal supplies, when we're talking about concrete, when we're talking about just getting people to do construction in general, when we're talking about lumber, all the prices had skyrocketed. And there are even a few other YouTubers, one that I was watching very, very closely at the time, Stradman, who recently just built an amazing home in Utah. But you see, he had the same exact problem. When it got down to actually building what he had created, the market had shifted. COVID had affected everything in the world and construction was heavily adjusted. Prices for everything were way more than what they once were. And our original budget that was set a year or two prior to building this had literally increased by two and a half times. And that's ultimately what it came down to. The price that it took to build that far exceeded what I originally planned for. And while yes, there are tons of cars and tons of things that I could have sold off to make up the difference to make that worth it. I also realized that maybe I was potentially restricting myself from a bunch of greater opportunities. For one, Hunt Co. and all of the car building, if you guys haven't noticed in all the videos, are in two separate warehouses. I'm paying for rent in one place, paying for rent in another place, and I do a lot of driving in between. And if I was to build this shop here, I wouldn't be able to have enough room to put Hunt Co. and the packing facility and all of the t-shirts and sweatshirts and clothes and garments in this place and even if I could I wouldn't want to be shipping that from my home address and then also too a lot of the channel has changed we now have Dylan and we have Ian and we have Anthony at this point and I didn't necessarily want to have a bunch of people just working at my house around the clock the idea changed the perception changed and quite honestly the budget in my opinion was just too far out of reach and watching other youtubers at the time struggling with their own ways and their own finances just because of how crazy construction was at the time was a really scary thought so i went back to the drawing board now i will admit i do wish that this went through sometimes i do wish that i didn't build my r34 skyline and i could have used all that extra money and putting it towards this building and it could have worked. But the beauty is, 
these permits, these plans in the area that we live will live forever. And what that means is in three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, if we ever want to go and get started and find the money to build it, we can do that. We don't need to go through the whole permitting process all over again. And let me tell you, when it comes to building, getting plans approved and getting the city to approve everything takes forever. At least here it does in Southern California. And the fact that if we decided to sell every single car and use all that towards building, we could literally start these plans tomorrow. Maybe one day in time, this garage gets built. But for now, it was a really good learning lesson. I started a bunch of construction. I put a lot of money into paying a lot of people to make this happen. And I had to pull out because I thought it was the better financial move and to invest all that money into our garage and our workflow and it allows me to have people like Dylan and Ian and Anthony and Calvin all working on the videos. So at the end of the day, I can do what I love most and that's racing cars, building cars and having a good time doing it. And at the end of the day, that is more important than having a selfish, amazing dream garage, which I definitely don't need. I definitely want, but don't need right now but maybe one day. So all that being said, there is a new place that we will be calling home soon. And I can't wait to show you guys. And the opportunities that we'll have at this place are something we've never had before. And I believe that it's gonna take what we're doing to the next level and it give us the platform to really excel. And that to me means more than anything. And it was a great learning lesson and the patience paid off because there is a home for us that I can't wait to start using. Now, I really wanted to just make this video and tell you guys what was going on. I've been keeping it under wraps for a while because I just didn't know how to tell you guys or when to tell you guys, but I hope you can understand and I hope you appreciate this little update video because there's just so much that goes into it. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of comments and questions down below that I will answer in the next video or when I go and show you guys the new space because trust me, it's coming very, very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I cannot wait to show you guys the progress that we have on the NSX and remember, if you have an old car that has been sitting or needs to be saved and you want to get rid of it, be sure to find me on Instagram, shoot me a DM, include photos of the car so I can at least see what we're working with. And who knows, maybe I might just buy it and we will rebuild it and resurrect it here on the channel. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and keep moving forward.